How's everybody doing? I'm just going to let this run. I'm just going to make a pin holder live from start to finish. So I will try Hello. answer any questions I can if I see them. Uh, kind of mid weird time of the day, so there may not be a lot of people on, but that's all right. So I'm just going to go for it now. too if you stick around to the end you'll be surprised at how it looks when it's done. It's this one because it's all. Uh, I would guess it's going to take about 30 minutes or so, roughly, um, give or take. Yes, the uh, moisture level of the material matters a lot. The wood has to be relatively dry, so I shoot for 8% humidity for my turning wood. Um, Bowls and things like that are done completely different than what we're doing, what I do. Lots of turning is done green, with green wood, meaning wet wood. Um, not the case with um, pin holders. It's got to be dry. If you want to stick around too, I'll go ahead and finish this one, like actually clear coat it and do the finish work on it as well. So I'll do the whole thing, which I normally don't do. I normally just turn the pin and that's about it. Get my hand out of the way, sorry. I, have it. I normally work like that. been so long since what? Since I've done a live? Okay, I'm going to have to put my hand in the way here a little bit in order to uh, get the diameter down, so bear with me a second. I'll try and leave it room so you can see over here where I'm cutting. Yeah, I've been a lot going on lately. I haven't been able to keep up with, you know, live streams and all the Instagram stuff. And try and make it more consistent than I have been. Okay, there's my basic overall shape. So now I'm going to refine it a little bit, cut the details into it. don't like how this is a little bit bigger than it should be. Turn that down. Let's cut 
cut this angle on there a little bit better. So that's the quickest part, the overall shaping of it. Done that. Now I'm gonna do some sanding. This, this is a higher grit. What kind of wood am I using? I am using, it's a combination of maple and walnut. You're going to see a better idea once when I stop it. Here in just a few minutes I'll stop it. do this separately at the end, the finial. I always do it, shape it last. Even after I clear coat the pin. questions or anything feel free to ask kind of just doing my own thing and working here cranking out a bunch of pins for calligraphy all right now we'll put the first coat of clear on it and I'll stop it and let you see what I did So it's walnut and maple. And I've segmented and turned each one of those segments a little bit off. Let me see. The RPM I'm running, I run about when I'm cutting around 2000 ish or so. I'll slow it down here for finishing. So when I start applying finish, which is CA on this one, and slow it down to about a thousand, a little bit less. I turn the pin itself at like 2,000, 2,500, somewhere in there. I used to turn a little bit faster, but I've slowed down some. As tools get sharper, no need to go that fast. In other words, tools getting sharper by my skill of sharpening, getting better and better. So this is now a medium. And each one of these, you'll hear that spray. I'm spraying an activator, which instantly hardens that CA. So I can move on to the next one. I don't count these or anything. I just do it until it looks right, and then I do a couple more. So I'll do several coats. And then I'll show you how I wet sand as well. 
minutes. This is done. Now, part of the process you don't see in, for example, this one is the <laughs> lot of time I had in putting that blank together. Um, this is really time consuming blank to make. You have to be pretty precise with it too to turn out well. Otherwise it looks like it's all off and goofy. Now what I'll do is I'll stop, take a look at the coats. All right, I'm looking for any variations, defects, etc. A little bit, so I'll do a few more coats. And the next will be wet sanding. Two more now. When did you start making? I started, um, let's see, 2012 is when I started. Yeah, so I've been making them now for a long time. Jeez. Seven years, um, and making them like nonstop. So, 2012 is when I actually, right at 2013 is when I established my website and everything. Now, one thing you'll see is I filled up a little bit of glue in this little area where the finial meets. So, before I actually wet sand, I'm going to cut some of that glue out using just the point of my. See if you can see. Yeah, you can see. Using just the point of my skew chisel. And I'll clean that up and make it straight and nice. I tell by looking at it. So if you look, let me get this placed right. I'll kind of point it out to you. See this line of light reflection? That's what I'm looking at. And as it turns, I'm looking for divots down in where it's not filled up. Now you can't see it on camera with a light where it's on the light sections, but it does it all the way around. So once I've built up enough coats where I don't see any bumps down in, then I do a couple more coats just for sake of safety. And that's when I know I'm done do applying the coats. And then once that's all done, I applied my two extra coats. Now I'm gonna wet sand. So let me grab a couple things. One second. Something to protect the lathe bed, which is my old nasty towel, micro mesh, and then some sandpaper and really fine grit. And then here, I run about 1300 RPM for wet sanding, something like that. And now, now that I've got some shine to it, what I want to do is make the entire thing dull. I want everything to be dull, with no shiny spots at all. And that goes for any finish you ever do. To make a finish look really shiny and nice, doesn't matter what it is, you sand it out smooth with water. And the water keeps heat from building up and melting the finish. And now I'm going by feel. I can tell by feel if I'm there yet. Um, you can stop and look if you don't have the feel for it yet. I'll show you. Let me get some of the wiping. And now you'll see the thing is now evenly dull. There should not be any shiny spots to the wood. Which, if it's all that's shiny because it's wet, it's all dull. And that's what I'm going for. 
that dullness. So now I move on to the next. Now that I know that that's done, now it's all just by feel. And I'm going to progress through the grits. Wet sand. I'm dipping this stuff in water. There's a cup of water over here to the side every time I sand. I believe so, Gretchen. It's. I haven't decided. I know I'm bringing a bunch of pins, but I'm going to sell a couple in the meantime just because otherwise I'm not going to have anything for sale in the next, for the past, you know, the three weeks before that. So something's going to be sold. Something's going to be there. What made me start making pins? Okay. This is a kind of a good time to just a boring part of me running through Sandy. Um, back in 2012, I bought my family farm found out that my great-great-grandfather was a pinman and he taught pin, pinmanship and found his stuff. So stuff being his pins, nibs, inks, scrapbooks, etc. Um, and so I said, oh, that's kind of neat. Thought, hey, I'm going to try and learn to write like that. And I found a person locally here in Indy and they hooked me up with a teacher and that teacher told me to get an oblique pin holder. Um, the oblique pin holders at that time were very few. Um, if I remember right, I found paper and ink arts and just had a couple choices of a standard pin holder. And I thought, hey, I got a lathe. I should be able to do that. I did buy one from paper and ink arts. Um, and then from that, and then my grandfather's pins and their great great grandfather's pins, I kind of backwards engineered it and started making my own. So I just wanted something a little bit different than what was available and made my own and that's what made me start. And from there I was joined a guild um, here in a calligraphy guild in Indianapolis and they said hey there would be a demand for this if you made them. First I thought they were crazy um, but it turned out there really was <laughs> a large demand. So that's how it all started. Alright, so now, dry this off a little bit. This should be, for the most part, pretty darn shiny by feel. Um, this process I'm doing is called wet sanding. And wet sanding is, you see how shine, the shine is there? That's all because of wet sanding which is, that's how you take any finish and turn it really, really nice as you wet sand it. Um, and that's shiny, but I'm going to make it shinier here in a moment. But the first thing i got to do is i got to finish this end of the pin um, so that I can take it off of the right side, or the bottom side of your screen, sorry, the finial end of the pin. So. All right. So now I'm going to bring my speed back up. And we're going to shape the end of this finial. Okay, and I'm going to have to have my hand right here in a way you're just going to have to watch close to the bottom side of your screen. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. Let's do this. There. Now you can see a little bit better. All right. Now I'm making the final shape to my finial. Thank you. You're walking dogs watching me make pins. Alright, so there it is, off. Okay. And you see, I try to waste as little wood as possible if you never stop where it went. Itty bitty pieces waste is all there is. Okay, get this out of the way, and then I'm going to sand this. It 
It depends on the, you know, what kind of pen holder I'm making. Um, if it's a budget one, I can do them pretty quick, um, like 15 minutes or so. Um, but for something complicated like this, I've got a lot of time invested in, first off, cutting all the material, gluing it up. Uh, matter of fact, this is glued up in several stages. Um, so total time in this pen, I probably have about maybe two hours, three hours, something like that total, um, with most of the time involved in putting it together. Oh my God, yeah, Ducky. Ducky is Gretchen on there's dog. I don't know if you saw it, but Ducky ate one of Gretchen's pens and destroyed it, and I glued it back together is a challenge. And so I put a flange on it, and it said, uh, no Ducky, bad dog. Yeah, so I dry sand. I do 120, 220, um, 320, 400, and then 600 dry sanding. And then I coat it in my finish, and then I wet sand with 400 grit, and then 600 grit, and then all the way through 12,000 grit. Um, pretty ridiculous amount. And then the last thing I do is I do that basically that process to the finial. Now the finial... Yeah, let's have a ducky test. Um, the finial, I don't do every bit of the layers like I did the rest of it because I can do just a few coats. It doesn't get handled. It doesn't get touched. And I do just a few coats of finish, and then I buff it out on the, my buffer. Um, something I'm going to do this video is a new product, which I found, which you can use if you don't have a buffer. Um, and I'll show you how it works. Yeah, 12,000 is the final grit. That's how you get it all super, super shiny. That's what, you know, if you see my pictures posted online, those aren't edited in any way, they aren't anything. All I do is I adjust the brightness of it and that's all I do to the photo when I take them. Um, everything else is really how it looks. I don't apply filters, I don't do anything. Because I want you guys to see exactly what you're gonna be getting not a screen modified version of what you'll be getting that looks pretty for um, Instagram or whatever. Okay, one more coat of this on the finial and then we're good. this so you can see and here put my hand under so you can see you can see how shiny it is it's pretty much the done pan I'm gonna do one more thing normally I cut these off and I take it to my buffer but I did find a product recently and I'm gonna show it in this video um, of a way to buff on the lathe so what I'm going to use, and I'll leave it here while you, if you want to write down what it is, if you make pins, is that stuff. It's a swirl remover used for professional cars. Paint finishes. So I just squirt a little bit in a towel, and you're going to see an amazing difference. This is not a custom order. This is one I will either be selling um, website or be selling at Calligrafair. All right, now you can watch how shiny this will get. From this part of it. Buffing the finish is so important. Now I'm gonna wipe it off. And you'll see a huge difference in the finish quality. So it's dang shiny now. So there you go. And the last part would be to cut it off the lathe, part it.
You use a micro polish. Yeah. So that's it. And the last thing is there's a little, you see a little bump on there, and I take a chisel and flatten this off. Get rid of that bump. And then it's ready to slot and flange and there you go. That's it. So there's a pin holder from basically start to finish. I'm not going to sit and make the flange and all that because honestly here I'll show you what I've got going on. I have a giant pile of pins. So I've got this big pile of pins and I'm just throwing them into that pile and making them and then later I will uh, slot flange put ferrules in whatever it is I'm gonna do so there you go all right oops One second. that is it so I am uh, gonna jump off of here got more pins to make today for sure over the next week what next not this fr yeah week from Friday I'll be in California so got a week to do anyhow so have a good day I will talk to you all later bye bye